Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work, community service, volunteering, and spreading positivity. We're always about the positivity here on the show, and I've got a very special guest with me today. She has worked with a wide variety of professional wrestling outlets over the years. She's got a passion for writing, has met so many incredible people, and she's got a story she's going to share with us, an advocate for mental health. I'm talking with the one and only Majestic Marie here today. Welcome to Wrestling With Heart. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored. I was like, I don't know if I'm what you're looking for because I'm kind of quiet most of the time about my personal life and things like that. So um, I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Let's start by talking about your childhood and upbringing. Where are you from? Um, Well, I'm originally from the the uh, uh, southern uh, Indiana area, kind of right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. I was born there. And uh, my dad, when he was younger, grew up going to the Louisville Gardens and seeing Memphis wrestling every Tuesday night. That's actually where he took my mom for their first date back in 1983. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's always been a part of my family. Um, my my mom's not really all that into it because Jerry Lawler landed in her lap that night, and she was not a fan of that. So <laughs> she was like, "Uh, I don't I don't know if I like this or not." And then when I was about two or three years old, we moved down to uh, Georgia. So I grew up watching uh, WCW, obviously. So that was that was the main thing. So I grew up in my dad's lap watching the Macho Man Randy Savage on WCW and uh yeah what was it about Macho Man that like got you hooked um well he was a little bit more colorful than everybody else was uh he always wore the tassels on his on his you know on his jacket and he had Miss Elizabeth with him so the whole presentation and he came down to pomp and circumstance and he I don't know his he seemed more I don't know, grabby, like, I don't know. It, it's hard to describe what goes on in a kid's mind and why they like certain things, but he was just more out there for me. Like, I don't know. I, was, I just gravitated towards more. He definitely. His, uh, charisma. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was very animated, had like a yeah. personality. He was a showman. Exactly. And the, oh yeah. And I'm the cream of the crop, you know, <laughs> so. Dig it exactly yeah all right so wrestling was something that you bonded with family with like you said with your dad and it was always something that you enjoyed uh was there a point where you said to yourself i gotta get in this business somehow not until much 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 later uh there was a period of time during uh my late teen years and very early 20s that i did not watch wrestling on on the television because when you're 14 or 15 and you're a young lady and you start to realize how other people treat other women and they the women on uh wwe programming at the time were not being treated very well so it i was like i i can't watch this this is this is grotesque i can't do it so i didn't i didn't watch wrestling probably for about seven to eight years Uh, during that time but I still went to local shows with my dad so I still consider myself a wrestling fan during that period of time just because I still went to local shows Um, it was after college and uh, I had went for my communications degree so writing is what I wanted to do and so I was like you know I really like wrestling I don't know if there's anything in that but I'm going to see if I can write, write about wrestling on, on webs, you know, cause the internet was kind of a, not new, but it, it was taking off a little bit more at that time. So the dot like, com bubble. Yes, exactly. So 
I, I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to write for a professional wrestling media site or something. So yeah, probably about, oh, 2011 or so. Oh, okay. So it was a little over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. right. Tell me about, tell me about like the first few articles you remember writing just for fun or just for professionally speaking. Well, recall. I started, I started off as the TNA results writer for that particular website. And, uh, after that, I, I just kind of showed that I could be prompt and I was there and I was professional and could always put a best foot forward. And then they kind of started letting me do a little bit more. Um, there are some things that I did that I did not have the permission to do. Um, when CM Punk left back in 2014, right at the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember back then or not, but everyone was watching his every move. He could not go to the sandwich shop without it getting blasted all over social media and, and media outlets and stuff like that. So I wrote an opinions piece called we should all leave CM Punk alone. And, um, this doesn't sound like a lot, but it was for because we were a very, very tiny website. So it got like 9,000 views on it, which was huge for me. But I didn't have the permission to post that. So um, uh, I uh, decided to leave not too long after that. But that is probably the one that sticks out the most. And we kind of want to transition now into your story that you wanted to share with us. You've been an advocate for mental health and s mental health struggles. Tell me about some of the, some of the um, things that you've done over the course of your career uh, in, over the years that that's helped out with that cause. Um, some of the things that's helped me. Well, I, I kind of want to talk about something first. Um, I, I've always had anxiety and depression a little bit, but um, back during the pandemic, like it did with almost everyone, it, it got really bad. It, it was awful. You know, you can't see your loved ones. You can't do the things that you normally like to do. You're kind of stuck in the house all by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was just a really dark time. And I kind of let myself get into a really dark, deep place that I had never really been before. I've, I've always struggled with it, but I always seem to pull myself out of it before it got that bad. And this was probably October of 2021. And I was driving back from somewhere and I had stopped and there's like, like a ledge that, that like there, there was like a curve and there is a ledge like this. And I was sitting there contemplating just not being here anymore. And my business partner sent me a text message and I don't know why I decided to look at it, but I did. And it said, Hey, Eddie Kingston cut this promo on Brian Danielson last night on rampage. It's really cool. You should check it out. I was like, well, this is ironic. The last thing I ever look at is going to be about wrestling. So I click on the link. And I look at it, and at this point in time, Eddie Kingston was in a tournament for the world title, and his next opponent was Brian Danielson. And Eddie Kingston was talking about depression and how he was feeling and how it makes him feel and how he reacts to the world. And I just started bawling because this is exactly how I was feeling in that exact same moment. Sorry, I'm, I'm shaking. Um, <laughs> and for the first time in forever, I felt like that I wasn't by myself, that someone else understood how I, how I felt. And I was like, if he, if he can do it, I can do it. So I turned my car on and I drove home. And from that very moment, I've been the biggest Eddie Kingston fan on the planet. <laughs> There's nothing. Nothing he can do that that's going to stop that, I don't think. So, and then a couple months later at Revolution 2022, I got to meet him in person. And 
I didn't go into details, but I did get to tell him a little bit of, of that story. And he sat there for about 10 or 15 minutes and talked to me and uh, gave me some really good advice. And so now every time I feel myself getting back into that state, I'll remember what Eddie told me personally and be like, he told me, he told me this, he told me never to give up. He told me that there's no such thing as normal. And what I'm feeling is, is perfectly valid. And I've just got to get my, pick up myself and, and keep going. And he also made me promise that I wasn't going to just sit on it, that I was going to try to uh, pay it forward and give back to people who might be going through the same thing. So that's what I try to do on my podcast. I feel like I, I know it, I don't have a huge reach or anything, but the, the few people that I can reach and can talk to, I try to make them feel that they are not by themselves, that there are people exactly like them out there who want, who, um, who care about them and that they are worth fighting for that their lives are worth living and um, to just keep, keep going on, even when you feel like there's no reason to. Wow. That is just a powerful story. Um, first of all, I just want to say that you uh, just, just are an incredible human being and nobody deserves to just, sh nobody should ever have to think about, taking their own life just because they're going through a hard time because in this world you don't get to come back if you right, exactly. make that choice and the fact that you were able to get through all that it works out in the end so i'm grateful and i'm happy that you're here still here and i'm so happy that you got to meet uh eddie kingston and give you that message and I'm just so happy that you're still, you're still kicking it. You're still, you're still living life and enjoying it. And life is just a blessing. Absolutely. Um, there is a song um, called how to save a life. And I, I you've probably heard of it. Yeah, and if you right. sit there and you, you think about the words to that song, you know, if I had stayed up with you all night, I, listen to that song and I'm sitting there. I, I sit there and think I am so glad that my family cannot, does not resonate with that song. Yeah. It's just, if, if it takes something like a song or, or whatever to get to really help you go through something, uh, it puts it all into perspective. And the fact that you're able to still do what you love and you're, and you're passionate about it. I mean, that beats anything, anything yeah. in the world. And you've, and you've, like you said, you've been giving back, you've been donating some money uh, to causes. And wh why do you feel passionate about doing this for others? Well, I understand how they feel. So I want to help them as much as I can um, especially with young people. The pandemic was very, very hard on, on young people. Suicide rates in, in youth, especially in young boys, is skyrocketing. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely, it, it's an epidemic. It's, it's very bad. So um, I, I try to give to organizations like the JED uh, Project that tries to put mental health resources in classrooms and schools and uh, just be becoming more aware of what our young people are going through right now. Yes, absolutely. Got to do as much as you can to help others so that their needs are taken care of. And just what's made, just what keeps everything going, keeps life going. That's what you got to do. Well, on a lighter note, tell me about your podcast that you have peaches and power bombs. That's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool title too. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, we are both, uh, based here in Georgia, uh, me and my business partner, Laura Presley, and uh, we kind of do a little bit of everything. We do watch alongs. We just have podcasts on. We do panels um, and uh, we'll we'll do live vlogs, too, if, if we go to any shows and things like that. So. So, yeah, we um, because we're based in Georgia, we and we're both 
to you know women and everything we just peaches and power bombs just seemed like the perfect fit for us oh it's a pretty cute name and how long have you been doing it for uh two years a little over two years now it's great that's that's so cool and i hope that you know you're following enjoys what you're putting the kind of content that you're putting out and it's it's so amazing i wish you the best of luck with that this is so wonderful getting the chance to talk to you means a lot to me and to my listeners and viewers watching this on youtube where can people find you on social media um well if you want to follow me personally on on x it's at queen of mods but if you want to follow peaches and power bombs we are on youtube and facebook and we are hoping to expand a little bit more this year it's pretty exciting thank you again for coming on and you're more than welcome to come back thank you so much for having me yes my pleasure talk to you later bye This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition. 